on in yourself? I'm doing well. So I had um, yesterday made a short clip asking the people of South Africa, uh, namely the minority communities, how they felt um, about being able to speak out if I had come up with an idea for them to be able to speak out and their identities be kept safe. So this is going to be the first of um, that idea. And hopefully, me. Yeah. So I was going to ask you what you think about it. I think it's a great idea. Um, you know, there's not too many people that actually want to be known and uh, there's many people that have something to say. Right. And so, I just sorry, could be one of them. Like I was saying, uh, you know, we, we all want to have, say, say something but nobody wants to say anything for fear of being identified. Um, so you came up with a great idea. Um, and now hopefully people will feel more free to express themselves and what's actually going on inside Africa. Right, and it's not to really speak about anything too controversial, just to give the people kind of a voice where they can speak on, you know, things that shouldn't be um, an issue to speak out about, you know, their experiences, if, if things have happened to their families and things like that. Um, they sh people shouldn't be afraid to speak out and say these type of things. Yet, I mean, that's just, yeah. the, that's just the way it is. So, I get, the first thing, the first thing I want to ask you is, um, you know, I'm on a lot of social media platforms, and when I put out the truth of what's happening in South Africa, when people see this, um, that are not South African, um, Americans, for example, their first um, question is, why don't they just leave? Pack your bags and get out. Just, <laughs> just leave there. So, coming from a South African that is in this precarious predicament, um, can you tell these people a little bit about the dilemma of that? Well, sure, sure. Um, I can give them uh, a good couple of examples. You know, it's easy for somebody to say, yeah, um, things are tough there, so just leave. And I'll give you an example. Um, you're an American. Um, have you got $14 million? No, I do not. Okay, so, you know, as a South African, a million, million dollars doesn't sound like much to American. But if you take it in our currency, it's... 14 million rand, um, anywhere between 14 and 15, it can fluctuate. So, um, not too many people got 14, 15 million rand lying around just to pick up and go. And the other thing is also, you know, we, we all have families um, and we're not prepared to leave them behind. So, as a South African, now you have, you get that million dollars together and then you can bring your wife and your children over to the USA. Um, but what about your your other immediate family? You know, we all got mothers, uh, we've got fathers, grandparents, some of us. Um, so, how many million do you need? Um, it's 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 not it's not something. Are you going to leave your family behind? in the circumstances right no and just to clarify um, what he's speaking on is in order for them to immigrate legally to the United States you have to have a million dollars to invest um, to be able to immigrate here and um, their rand which is their money 
it takes 14 to 15 rand to make one American dollar. So essentially for them, that's 14 to 15 million dollars. And you would be having to leave behind your mother, your grandmother, your brother, your sister, in a place where they're very likely to be murdered. So even if someone has that kind of money, which is very unlikely, um, they're not going to leave their mothers, their sisters, their brothers behind, you know, and not many, I mean, it's very few people that have this kind of money. I mean, this kind of money is an astronomical amount of money there. Well, yes, there's a question for you, Brandy. How many people in the USA do you, do you personally know that have $14 million? I, I don't know anyone that has $14 million. N not that tells me that they have it oh, anyway. Well, there you go. <laughs> Unless they're so, hiding it. People out there that have $14 million. Yeah, it's a lot of yeah, money. You know, but uh, that's, that's, the, that's the reality of, of the situation. You know, it's easy for... Um, the U.S. And, and Americans to say, well, you know, um, you don't like it, leave. Um, how, how are you planning to leave? Have you got $14 million to leave if, if, if you let's put the, put the boot on, on the other foot? Right, and it's very hard you know, it's, um, to get visas. Um, it's like a double-edged sword. You have to have a job to get a work visa. You have to have a work visa to get a job. Um, you have to, the company has to prove they've been trying to hire um, Americans for three months. I mean, it's very, it's very complicated and the rules are different for these uh, white South Africans. Um, also, I would just like to say that the way that they can leave is to be granted refugee status. This is what is needed. This is what people need to push for if you're concerned. Um, it's the only way because you can't just wake up in the morning and Americans don't appreciate that we live in this great country. You can't just wake up in South Africa and say, hmm, I'm going to live in America today. Um, I think I'll just pack all my stuff and go. It does not work like that. You're a citizen of another country. I mean, so and you, you we're can't not just. We're not accepted anywhere. Right. The UK won't. I personally read a letter from someone that reached out to the UK, you know, um, because his ancestors are from there, his family, and they basically, it was horrible. They said no, because there's no problem, because the numbers are lied about, um, or they're made to seem small, because it's reported as a whole, um, the numbers of murders in South Africa, but they they leave out the fact that the, the farmers in the, the white community only make up seven to eight percent of the population. When you add that to the fact of how many are murdered, it changes everything. So they manipulate these statistics by not by not giving that fact. My simple my simple answer to them would be, well, I tell you what, you come live here and you tell me how that feels. They wouldn't last a week. I'm telling you, we're too conditioned to safety. Sure. We, we couldn't live in terror. I couldn't live in terror. I would probably be killed the first day because I have a bad temper and I don't like disrespect. And you have to eat a lot there, swallow a lot, um, because you're sure. in a really bad position. Um, I don't want to make this too, too long, so I want to move on to the next thing. Um, the second thing that I get a lot is, um, you just fight back. You have to fight back. And this frustrates me greatly because I understand um, the dilemma and the dynamic. Um, but will you tell us a little bit about what the problem is with just fight back. Well, to be brutally honest, uh, you know, the world basically neutered the, the pit bull, and now you're telling the pit bull now you must fight back. 
uh, that, that's, I mean, that, that's insane. Um, we're, we're already seen as the enemy of <coughs> everyone um, with the connotation of apartheid, which most most of us didn't, we didn't, we didn't word it, we didn't start it. Um, the people that, that actually invented the word are, are long gone. Um, but we sit now with this story and this word that looks like it'll never go away, even 25 years down the line, um, you, you hear it on a regular basis. Right. Um, people who weren't even alive when it was still in place are suffering or being punished still. Exactly. And they, exactly. they were not even now, alive. If you, want, you know, you, if a person wants to talk about um, you want to stand up and fight, um, we do that. We are the enemy of the whole world. Um, I mean, just think about it logically. Yeah? Um, we're looking from for from uh, from from the world for support. Um, and if we seem to be the antagonist, um, that's going to all the help around the world is going to fall away, and we will be seen as the evil monster. Right. which we aren't and we now need to um, sit and wait and in the meantime um, my people get slaughtered um, and how many more have to have to be butchered uh, before the world will eventually say well you know maybe we'll help you and um, it's easy to say you know fight back and um, I tell you what how about you come over here and uh, you start the fight then, um, because if we seem to start it, we we're going to be the enemy. We won't help. We won't have uh, support from from the United Nations. We won't have support from the U.S. government. We won't have support from the European Union. We won't have support from anybody. Um, and then we'll be back in isolation. And you'll be the. Um, we've been there before. Right, and you'll be the evil people charged with war crimes, crimes against humanity, even though for 25 years, the fact is this has been being done to your people. And... Yeah, we've been at that. Exactly. We've been for 25 years. And, and it just still, goes back... And we're with still the, standing there working for support. It goes back to the fact that the whole world is turned upside down. We all are living down the rabbit hole with the Mad Hatter. Nothing makes sense. Right is wrong, wrong is right, good is bad, bad is good. Nothing makes sense. And for anyone who well, is um, going to bring up a party, and they will, this kind of slaughter, this kind of murder of innocent children, women, the dehumanization, the level of brutality, this did not happen during this time and anyone that says that it did is a liar there are bad and good in every part of society but this murder Correct. never happened never well it, it continues every day and it just seems to be escalating can you tell people that don't know I mean, any Americans you know, on the just fight back part. Can you tell them about the numbers and the weapons? What, okay, if your people are day, armed and who are armed to the right. teeth? <laughs> well, the state is obviously armed to the teeth. They've, they've got all the, the weapons that uh, were left behind. They they run the country, um, so they they the mechanized, armed um, to the teeth. Um, you know they're not don't particularly look after most of the stuff. But, but I mean there's caches uh, that have been put in places all over the country, and even outside of the country. Um, you know when you talk about a population, you're talking approximately well depending on on the People, I mean, there's a number of, of people that are, are leaving um, 
you know, Australia, UK, New Zealand, um, and the United States, um, people that can leave. Um, but I mean, overall, you're looking at approximately a population of roughly around four, <coughs> four million, maybe four and a half million, if, you, if you're lucky, maybe five. Um, against a population that's in excess of, of 50 million. You take the, the minorities of the, the Indians, which are also roughly in the region of between 3 and 4 million, uh, the last I had a look. Um, and then you still have the Khaled and the Khoisan, which are also another minority. Um, I mean, there's, there's, we seriously outnumbered. And I mean, they know that. I mean, and half been, of your population... Uh, on social media front. Half of your population, they're not yeah. men fighting, prepared to fight war. I don't think anybody really wants to wants to fight a war. No, I'm um, definitely not. But, I, but what, what I'm trying to say is, they are not. They are not men going to be facing this or coming yeah. under an attack. Sure. They are women and children. Sure, sure. Look, these um, numbers. Exactly, and that, that, and yes, you know, you take that. So if you, so you take the four, 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 four and a half, five million, uh, and then minus the women and children, um, those numbers substantially decrease. But also at the same time, again, if you take the majority and let's call it 50, 50 million, give or take, um, and you take half of that out of the equation. You're still sitting with 25 million. Overwhelming. Uh, I mean, that's, that's still a substantial number. I mean, you just half that. Right, and, and I happen to know that there have been, I mean, it's been an epidemic of robberies of police stations for weapons, um, even military sure. bases, which blows my mind, by the way, because this would never happen in the United States. A military base being robbed of its weapons, that is disgraceful, really. That, I mean, I couldn't believe that. Uh, and they've been robbing on the Jew, you gun shops. So they've been amassing millions of um, military grade firearms. You know, the people doing these attacks, they often do these attacks with AK-47s, you know, you see them with AK-47s in the streets. Your people aren't armed with AK-47s, sure. are they? Sure. No, no, we, we don't have uh, AK-47s. I mean, look, there's there's a variety of weapon systems that are out in on the black market. And, uh, I mean, that's also one of the reasons why they're hitting the farms. To get weapons. Because those people are known to, to, to have have firearms and what's the easiest way to get hold of weapons and that would be to attack farmers because it, uh, most of them at some point had or have <coughs> um, weapon systems uh, used for hunting and uh, their self-protection years ago. Right, but they um, did at one um, but, uh, confiscation of weapons already, correct? Yes. Yes, that's correct. They have, they You're have, talking uh, about doing it again. Uh, yes, they they are, and uh, we continue to fight fight that fight as as much as we can. Um, the the whole idea at the end of the day, what it looks like, is to like every other country is trying to do. They're trying to take the legal uh, firearms away from the legal people, so that the criminals can actually have their free reign and. Right. Uh, you just become because criminals don't care about laws. Another statistic. They're not going to give up their guns. Really, because they don't. Uh, exactly. Why would they? They wouldn't. They don't I care mean, about. It's laws. worldwide. I mean, you. You people have this uh, similar, a similar uh, situation in, in the U.S. Often, after a school shooting, they they call for the banning of ARs. 
Unless so it uh, happens to be anybody. Uh, unless they happen to be Democrats, um, just like the school shooting that just happened, mm -hmm. then you hear barely anything about it. But if it's um, a Christian person that k shoots up something or kills somebody, then, oh my God, we need to ban AR-15s. First of all, AR-15 is not even an assault rifle. It's just a rifle, just like a, a regular rifle. It just looks different. But this is not a military weapon. You wouldn't last five minutes in a war with an AR-15, by the way. Just to have to throw that in there. Because Democrats, they call this a military-grade rifle. This is not even close. Oh, look, I mean, there's a lot more people getting killed with knives. Um, are we going to ban knives now? Are we going to? Uh, I mean, there was a there, there was a, a, a South African woman. And I think it was was it was it was in this week that was um, uh, murdered on a farm with a hammer. Are we not going to ban hammers? Right. So the last question I wanted to ask you. Um, was just briefly tell us okay even if you do have a weapon in your home and attackers and they, they don't come one they come five to ten okay and so you have your wife your children that are potentially going to be raped tortured murdered um, if you kill them what what being a white person because in South Africa being a white person the fact is that there are more laws for you the laws are against you the law is not on your side and you have so many laws against you just for being white um, if you are to kill an attacker I mean what is what are the consequences of that well, uh, you know, Brandy, uh, the, the, the problem comes in here is, you know, from, from, from what I've seen and uh, what I've heard of and what I know is, um, and there's been a number of incidents um, whereby a guy protects his farm and he puts up uh, type traps uh, around his farm to safeguard his family. And uh, these farm attackers uh, stumble on this thing, and maybe one passes away um, because he's now fallen onto some sharp instruments that have been placed there as a defense mechanism. The guy gets charged with murder. Right. I mean, they pretty much um, tell you, you know, that if you your know, wife is being raped, to not act, to wait. So that you can um, identify the attacker or attackers at a later date. Is that right? Once he comes through that that uh, prison gate door, whatever you want to call it, um, and there is no other barrier after that, you may defend your, your life. Um, but then, I mean, you got you got to be judged in court. Um, and how that goes, uh, who knows? The um, court system is not on you your know, side. At the end of the day, correct. And also, we don't have um, the thing like you people do in the US where you have castle law, whereby somebody comes onto your property um, without your knowledge um, and wants to do you bodily harm, um, that you can eliminate the threat. Uh, here, you actually have to wait until. Um, your life is in danger or they're basically shooting at you before you can actually do something in return. Yeah, that's crazy. In Texas, it's not just our home. No, so it's anywhere. Sure. Thankfully. Um, you know, you, 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 there, there could be some serious ramifications should you decide to want to defend somebody that is actually... Uh, being brutally beaten or possibly could be killed right. to try and intervene because at the end of the day you could you could become the murderer right and so this is a lot of the reason why people hesitate you know I mean 
for a white South African to be sentenced to prison is hell. It's a sentence in hell, pretty much. I mean, and it can be a death sentence, pretty much. So, I mean, this would make anyone hesitate what happens to these people in prison. I mean, sure, you sure. see what's happening in society. But you must also remember, Brandy, we, we as, as a minority, um, on the whole, yes, there are um, exceptions, as there are in every society. But overall, the South African minority is a law-abiding people. Right. They don't want to break the law. I know. We don't. We don't. We don't we, exactly. Um, we, we know for, from that. And, and, you know, they, they, if, we, if we even talk about the apartheid days, uh, there were laws and you followed those laws. And if you didn't, you, you, you there were serious consequences. Um, right. There was law and order. We live a Christian. Christian values. There's Christian values, you know, um, and and those values have been brought forward from uh, from generation to generation. And um, we law-abiding people, we don't want to be in prison. Um, None of us want to have a family member in prison. Um, not to say that they, they, they aren't the exceptions. I mean, in every society, there's uh, the bad apple. But I mean, overall, um, the white minority is a law-abiding people. Right. Well, I'm going to um, end here. Um my family is oh. acting crazy. It's the 4th of July here in Texas, and I'm lucky that I got this moment <laughs> in time. Um, thank you to all the veterans. Thank you for your service. And um, so I'll end here. We'll see how this goes. And then we'll see if anyone else well, wants to speak. Great stuff. Uh, well done for all your all, all your work, uh, Brandy, and uh, I, I hope you get a lot more followers and a lot more support. Thank you very much, and um, I'm sure I will be talking to you again soon. Hundred percent. You have a great one, huh? You too.